please, please don't feel like you don't have the necessary skills to um, sort of catch up uh, because programming can always be learned and um, we're here to, to help you with those issues. Time management. Um, this is a tricky one and even more tricky for women. Uh, I'm not sure how many of us can say that. Uh, they're taking care of family, their chores, and they're trying to excel in their career. Uh, there's so much and so much pressure. So how do we manage time? Um, what helps me, and I can only speak from experience, is to take out this, uh, it's probably understanding what, what the, the foundation is about. Um, start from the beginning or dive into it in a way. Um, block out an hour or 30 minutes. Um, each day, or even 10 minutes each, 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 for each hour, where you look at a certain topic and you try to come in. But even at one hour a day, you're indicating to programming or familiarizing yourself with a certain topic that, you, that you're not familiar with or writing comments. Um, block out that one hour where you just, sorry, I'm not sure if you could hear me. Uh, first of all, we can have a question. Hello everyone, can you hear me? You can just chat uh, type on the ch uh, on the chat box if you can hear me. Um sorry sorry today's moderator will be back in a minute, but meanwhile we can still um get um more comments from you or more concerns from your end so that by the time she she is back she's able to respond to them or some of them we could just address them together here. So anybody who has other concerns, other um, challenges that you are facing, so feel free to just uh, raise your hand or unmute. Uh, it's an open space. And just to remind you, um, these sessions are meant uh, to check in on us as well um, as females. So how are we doing? What are the challenges that we are facing and how best 
can we as a female community of 10 Academy uh, help one another uh, to sort out these challenges so we can we can together um, we can together progress through so feel free to raise your hand and um, don't feel shy one thing is that there's no problem that is too small or there's no challenge that is too silly so feel free to say however however small you might think it might be so anyone who's out there You can just unmute. Uh, it's it, it's fine. You can just unmute and share. My connection dropped here. Sorry. Uh, did you have a question? Oh, welcome back. I, I, I had um, <laughs> had taken over for a few minutes waiting for you to be back. So over back. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Um, I think for its time management, did we capture that? I'm happy to send in more resources on how to manage time and also create um, um, resources on, on how we can go about the time management. Um, do you have any more questions? Go ahead, Chris. Uh, shall we? I hope I said that right. Chris, go ahead. I see your hand is raised. Please go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, that's me. Please go ahead. Okay, yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. So, hi, my name is Bukhari. So, I'm also from uh, software engineering background. I'm a software engineer by training. And I've been wa wanting to, tran to transition into a male and data science for, for a while now. Uh, and I'm glad that you are also from the same background and have managed to succeed on that. Uh, but for me, you know, sometimes I feel like there is a lot to learn and I don't know how, where, where to start. And you know, I sometimes feel really, it's difficult for me. A, a pause to talk a little bit more about how I can succeed, it would be great. And uh, my second question for you is, you. I think I heard you mention that you are working on uh, NLP research. And so it would be great if you talk about how you end up like uh, following the, the research path and what made you lead into that path. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for the session, uh, Rick Um Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet around machine learning and data science and deep learning as a whole. So that is a lot to go around. Um, but it depends on, on what, what helps the two things. One is a personal interest, which ties back to your question, like how I got into NLP. Uh, finding a problem, sort of like what you have, this idea to improve the world, and that's exactly how I got into the, into the space. I had a passion for wildlife conservation, for preserving uh, um, wildlife conservation, especially um, black lines. And um, the community from which I came from, um, the game rangers were you know, up against a billion dollar coaching industry. But um, I had come from the software background where I knew how to sort of develop uh, big data systems to handle big data, 
you know, such as you know, sensor data or you know, action recognition. Um, and then I also come from this um, community with my software, I was able to elicit requirements. And so I tend to work with community members and indigenous knowledge leaders um, and rangers on using indigenous inspired methodologies in AI, then I needed to design technologies or make use of technology that would allow me to capture all this data, process it, and report uh, on it. Yes, so um, that's how I got into the space. I knew very little about ML at the time, but I sort of looked around. Um, I, I started um, reading up on ML solutions or ML topics that could help me mitigate the problem. Uh, in NLP, how I got into NLP, started with some pizza vision. Um, as much as it was fun to set up cameras in the wild to think of sensors, um, the key into, into tracking was really in the indigenous knowledge system or indigenous knowledge. Um, but the challenge was the language. I could not speak Koi and I could not understand the Koi sign language because I spoke Bunchy. So I went into creating data and that's how I went into uh, NLP research. Once I started um, creating data sets, I then looked at storage, where to store it, how to process it, how to build models. Then I started with a simple machine translation application. So that required me to um, edit straight data and train a model from scratch, uh, which leveraged up in some software engineering. And then from that, I had to build a machine translation model. From machine translation, I then went into speech applications or text to speech. And that's how I got into acquiring the skills um, within NLP research and, and um, service selling in that. So um, that's, that's how I got into this space uh, because there was a lot of things on the internet and I didn't know where to begin. Oftentimes I found myself stuck. So I started with a project for an idea to solve the world and I divided this into components um, that speaks to different skills from software engineering to um, these are same things design is also a part of software engineering to managing the project as resources as it needs um, and also from the ML AI side what it what what skills do I need for what what company from that um, from these skills do I need to realize the project and that's how I built um, my skills over the seven years. I worked on many of these fashion projects or ideas to improve the world. Some of them worked, others didn't, but it really started with an idea and that's how I built my skill. And perhaps this um, could support to help you and how important this um, idea to save the world is to um, building your own skills in the space. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Ms. Uh, Savit. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Uh, Mary, how did you set your hand up? Would you? Yeah, just I just wanted to pose a comment uh, regarding. Yeah, there's a lot of you know, um, you know, questions around how do I process this information? Information is too much and all that. So I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience when it comes to. Uh, human beings and what we can handle, we, might, we actually would be very surprised uh, how much we can handle. And as the saying goes, you never know where your boundaries are until you actually stretch them. So let's look at it uh, more like us trying to understand what are our elastic limits when it, coming, when it comes to comprehension of information or uh, uh delivering tasks and from my personal experience the more you do that the more your um your boundaries uh or the scopes of your boundaries widen so the next time you do the similar similar kind of tasks it won't be as um overwhelming or as stressful as you may mention as it is now so it's uh, it's a matter it's just how our bodies and our minds uh, um, are meant to adapt and they're resilient uh, in those ways. And there was a question on the, um, on the, on the chat from Tadesi. 
regarding stress. So yeah, I've seen that in most, even on Slack, there, there's been a lot to do with, um, with uh, stress levels, how to overcome stress. Actually, um, we're actually not as stressed as we call it. Yes, we might be having or facing overwhelming information, uh, phase of overwhelming information, a lot of information uh, uh, compared to what you are used to before. But the, the, the best ways that I've learned in terms of like trying to uh, manage overwhelming situations is first, I think by getting organized. So sometimes some of these tasks, yes, they might be a lot, but once you're not organized, it is hard for you to actually do them and complete them accordingly, especially when it comes to deadlines and all that. So it, it, is, a good, um, it is a good period for us to learn how to organize ourselves, prioritize our tasks. So you, you look at the deadlines, we, which one has the deadline, uh, sooner deadline and uh, against the workload that you need to do. So that is on its own. As once you nail that, it's a skill that you use even outside there, not only here, even at the job, uh, which is very much required at the job market as well. So um, let's look at it in a very positive way. And two, I would say uh, from my end, I would advise that let's not feel like um, we are less qualified for this. You're here because uh, you have had an opportunity to be here. So let's utilize this opportunity like it's not coming back again. Don't be shy, ask whatever question it is. Let's use Slack to be as active as possible. Learn as much as you can because this is the only opportunity um, uh, you might have to learn this. So thank you. Over to you, Well. Thank you so much, Mary. I think that that encapsulates um, everything that I intend to um, share with you today. Um, some of the key things I took away from Mary was prioritize, organize yourself, um, and ask as many questions. Um, you have every right to be here as the next person for a finish um, and, and you have a unique skill that is allowed you uh, selling program. Um, I'm going to tell you what Mary said to a previous question that was asked in time management. Uh, Mary, I think your speaker is still on. Right. Um, when you prioritize this task, um, you, that, that helps you manage your time. And when you organize yourself and your task, that also helps you get the most out of your time. So I see that one of the, of it, and I'll try to say an example you had with the um, forking the Twitter um, analysis uh, GitHub ripple. When you look at the task and the uh, requirement, you take the task and you break it down by expectation or outcome. They want you to fork um, the GitHub ripple, you need to fork the GitHub ripple, the GitHub ripple. You need to uh, submit a few commits to fix the bug. Uh, you need to create a, a branch. Uh, you then need to perform a pull request. And then you need to use GitHub issues or a um, GitHub issues or project to organize yourself. So taking this and breaking it down into these seven things will help you organize yourself. And then you know how to allocate your, your time to solving this system. Um, particular task, these subtasks of this uh, particular challenge. And when you take such an approach, you find yourself finding it much easier to solve the problem because you've broken it down into tiny things that are manageable in terms of time and resources um, and, and, and research um, capabilities, but also in ensuring a quality deliverable. And when you take such an approach to solving problems and organizing yourself and managing yourself with your time, uh, this comes in very handy as well in the industry and in everything that you do. Um, yes, in procrastination, uh, yeah, that, that is, there is no sufficient procrastination. So this is also something that you need to um, 
to deal with, you need to do away with, you need to work around with. Um, and that comes with uh, prioritizing, looking at the deadline, organizing yourself, and then you find that you, 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 you will, like you'll have more time in the end than having wasted it in the beginning, like procrastinating, and um, looking at a fast specific you know, very from program um, any other questions or comments? Mary? Yeah, maybe final from my end. It's also important to understand that uh, um, our bodies and our, our minds, they get tired. They, they tire. That is... That is part of the process and understanding that it's good for you and finding some sort of uh, small routines that can be that you can use to re-energize to relax your mind your body once in a while it, it is a very good strategy to enhance productivity sometimes we might think that um, you getting stuck on a laptop for six hours straight might help you get there quicker, but you forget that we, we, we are humans and our bodies need to rest. So it might reduce your productivity if you're, you're not finding small routines. It can be something small like dancing to uh, music. Like for me, when I, am, uh, I feel very exhausted, I know if I walk, it works out for me. Or if I just watch um, maybe one episode of Tom and Jerry, I feel re-energized, I can go back. So trying to uh, find your routine that can help you re-energize, as well as ensuring that you're eating properly. It's also, my, my background is mainly in public health. So maybe <laughs> if I'm mentioning this, I'm coming from um, a very informed point of view. So it's also helpful for your, for your brain. Drink a lot of water, eat eat well and find routines for relaxing. It will help you with your productivity, especially when you have a huge workload. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it for my end. Thanks, Mary. I just added those uh, tips in there as well. Meditation is really important, however, whichever works for you, yoga um, or, or, you know, hiking a chi and just sitting somewhere. Um, outside in the sun or fighting and it goes a long way. Thinking plenty of water, especially if you're sitting for long periods of time. And that, that, that's one thing you'll find in the space. Um, when you're in this, whatever exit strategy in sex, you sit a lot and you feel like you need to be glued to the computer to be productive. And your brain will shut down often. So it is important to, to take that stretch Drink that water, play a song to make you feel happy, um, take a walk, sit in the sun, reflect, introspect. Um, creativity then, it, 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 it will help you in terms of, of, of thinking creatively. Um, as well as in time management, what I do and what I've done over the years has been blocking out five, ten minutes every hour to unwind. And this is really important because it, it helps me introspect or reflect on what I've done in the last hour, uh, what hasn't been done, what I need to do, but also the time to do and get back to the So when you, it doesn't make you less productive, and it, it, it definitely doesn't make you less productive if you block out these five, 10, 15 minutes to do whatever. You just dance to a full song, sing along, stretch, uh, eat, very important. So um, it, it helps your brain relax. And uh, once you like to be able to um, reset and, 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 and really look at the problem, find interesting. Um, any other questions for me? Yes, indeed, Stacey. Exercising helps. Talking also you know, helps. Uh, also, reach out to each other. I mean, um, reach out to each other, reach out to other people uh, on, on Slack, uh, ask questions, just 
find out what works with other people, um, if they're participants among yourself, um, you know, ladies among yourself who, who ask a lot of questions or who are active, um, reach out to them if you feel like you can learn a single tool to help you do some of, some of the things. Uh, make friendships at the end of the day. It's not about being in the course and like competing for that um, one spot. It could also be, you know, long lasting friends, lasting friendships and collaborations on, on, on projects that you might have um, similar interests in. Rafa, you have your hand up. Please go ahead. So, hi everyone. I hope you can hear me well. And yeah. Um, so I'm Rafa from Sudan, and it's like it's really nice to be here, part of this week zero, and part of this session specifically. Uh, so thank you, Juan and Mary, for the nice advices that you gave. Uh, so yeah, for me it's really challenging this training since it started last two days but I really enjoy it and um, yeah I can see some of the females here saying that it's like it's stressing and so on I mean I don't find it that way I don't look at it that way I feel it's like uh, I'm learning and I am happy with all of these challenges that I face because as you said it's the only uh, it's the only way that I can um, I can learn is through all of this and yeah I, I just wanted to share also uh, when you say how you relax uh, I think there was a question like that it, so uh, for me reading verses of Quran because I'm Muslim and praying it really helps me a lot and also I like and enjoy so much making crafts, coloring, I like coloring in glasses, uh, sometimes drawing and stuff like that. Uh, it relieves me so much. I feel like there isn't really a big deal with everything else. Uh, so that's it. Uh, all I want to share with you and thank you again. I'm not sure we lost you there, Rafa, or if you might. Thank you so much, Rafa. Um, letting you this help. Um, meditating how it is for you um, and engaging in some creative activity or workout really helps. And on that type of, you know, doing cross, um, in terms of, of, of analytics or machine learning or you know, product management, whatever. It, you find that the best ideas or how you really excel come from things that you're passionate about. And when you when you bring your passion or your interest to an, an ML or tech, when you bring these two together, you'll be so surprised at what you can. Um, because you're bringing passion to something that is applied, like tech alone is, tech alone does not work, but applied, tech applied um, has greater impact in the state. Um, that's why we have emerging fields like bioinformatics, um, after informatics, um, I don't know what next, um, what do they call it, digital humanities, I think there's something to it, but it really brings tech, machine learning, and deep learning, um, a field, and when you have such computational archaeology and things like that, um, when you apply tech to a passion or an interest or a domain of interest, you really begin to build certain skills that no one else has because these are things that interest you, and they 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 they, they, they keep you in your soul. They sort of drive you to excellence. Uh, that's something that has worked for me. That's something I encourage you. There, 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 there's work now on, on machine learning and AI and art um, and language. So bringing these three things together 
has been one of the most interesting fields of topics at the moment. Uh, where you bring language, which is culture, and then you bring art, um, and then you bring, you know, vision or language into it. It's, it's just truly amazing. So do not um, underestimate your passion. Um, do not overlook them when you're thinking of machine learning and, you know, tech as a whole. Uh, bring them together, and uh, you'll be surprised at, at the gems that you find and, and the skills that you pick up that are really valuable. Uh, it will be very valuable to the industry. I just want to change gears uh, so that we can just close up. Um, applying to the approach to the to the program, uh, where did you guys hear about it? Was it a recommendation from the frame? What inspired you or what you to apply? Um, some of you said that you've been trying to get, I think um, someone earlier said that they tried to get into machine learning and data science for a while now. Uh, but what was the motivation for you um, to signing up into the, you know, the program? What do you hope to do out of beyond the job, right? <laughs> uh, how 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 did how did you how did you show about the application that a great Please go ahead, Rafa. I can see your hand is raised. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, uh, for me, what encouraged me to apply for this uh, is really that I believe AI, and I mean, this technology uh, using machine learning is, is just uh, the dominant thing now in the world. And I really enjoy to to tackle in this kind of problems in I mean yeah uh, in the world. Um, so yeah, the idea itself, I mean, it's really like very unique for me now, uh, and I believe that uh, it's just going to be everywhere used so I wanted to be part of this and um, I find this it's a very good opportunity for me to learn such uh, in such field yeah Anyone else willing to share? I think we should be closing in the next eight minutes. So, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Anyone else wants to share? You can also write it in the chat. Like, what what motivated you to apply? Um, did you have doubts? Did someone talk you into it? Um, curiosity. What was it like for you? Are you still nervous? I think we've spoken about that. But do you feel, perhaps another question, do you feel inspired or empowered to continue with the, you know, with the, with the program? Does anyone else can just like pop, pop your arms and check your stuff? But I do encourage you to do but also feel free to pop in your arms and check. Uh, are you inspired and inspired to continue with the program? Um, who have doubts, um, who help, um, what are your thoughts at this point? Make it easy, we have to send people to just, you know, write down the answer, a yes or no, or like, whatever in the chat. <laughs> Right. 
Right. Um, you feel empowered or inspired from the session of uh, faith, peace, and empowerment. Um, and it's Daisy, please go ahead. Uh, you say something. Um, thank you. I'd say that I definitely feel more inspired and challenged, like um, adjust my mindset, not focus on the struggle, and uh, more or less be happy for the learning experience, regardless, um, so that the best students are not the ones that look it. I didn't get that quite clearly, but that I found to be um, uh, very inspiring, and I hope that moving forward, I'll just get like a reset of mindset and uh, be able to do the most that I can with the little knowledge that I have. Thank you. And thank you very much to like this human on the um, platform. It just makes sure that no one is left behind. Right, exactly. Exactly, Daisy. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, anyone else, uh, please share. Um, did you have some positive takeaways from the session? Um, I inspired and empowered to continue the program um, or continue, you know, learning, you know, forging collaborations. Please raise your hand or like pop it in the chat as well. Um, it would make me really happy. A one-liner, three or four words would also go along. 